having an impact even in this room. There seems to be a drought in front of here, and there's just a few resilient people. I guess Father is praying enough to be resilient, uh, to be able to sit in the front. I know that uh, you've all come to uh, learn about climate change, uh, natural resource management, and uh, but let's start with the uh, geography lesson first. Raise your hand if you know where uh, the state of Hawaii is. Yeah, a lot of people. Uh, raise your hand if you know where the Philippines is. Okay. Raise your hand if you know where Australia is. Okay, raise your hand if you know where Micronesia is. It's a good number. So, Philippines is in the west, Hawaii is in the east, and Australia and Papua New Guinea in the south. And when you hear about the typhoons that are coming towards the Philippines and Japan and China, they never talk about when they say there are these typhoons that are coming to the Philippines, China, and Japan, that's when those typhoons are destroying our islands. Nobody talks about those islands in between. So that's where I'm from. And as Cecilia has introduced me, I'm with the Micronesia Conservation Trust, and there's just 10 of us that work uh, for our, our organization. I'm here to tell you about the story of, of my uncle. His name is Antonio Crimet. His, his grandfather is from uh, Portugal, but he's from my head. He's 88 years old. A very devout Catholic who has done everything that he's supposed to do as a Catholic to lead a very good Christian life. He eats only mainly local foods, grows his own food, raises his own meat. So he has almost zero, a zero carbon footprint. And yet, for the past 10 years, his house has been flooded with seawater that's coming in from the ocean. And this used to happen once in a while. But now it's happening every October, every November, every December, and every January. <coughs> Imagine your own parents and your own grandparents who are in their 80s having to deal with uh, flooding like this for uh, four months of the year and sometimes even more if there's high tide and there's uh, rain, which also floods his house. He's contributed nothing to climate change, global warming, but he's feeling the effects of it. This, just two weeks ago, was it two weeks ago when the moon was high in our part of the world? Six inches of seawater came inside the house. So you have, you see pots and pans and different things floating around in the house. So when I was leaving to come to Guam, my daughter was asking me, why are you going to Guam to be in a meeting to talk about climate change? When Uncle Antonio is already suffering the impacts of climate change right here, why don't we just help him? <laughs> and that's a very true question. But we don't have all the answers and all the resources. And so I have to come to Paul to seek partnerships. Especially to tell you the 
real stories of people like my uncle and Tony. There are thousands of them across the Pacific. And I'm sure there are also millions of people across the world who are feeling this. And as I said, I've come to build new relationships, to build new partnerships, to learn about what other people in the world are doing to combat the impacts of climate change or to adapt to the impacts of climate change. We have our own solutions that we're trying. We have some ideas. We have some resources. But the impacts are too great for the resources that we have, the limited resources that we have. So I am here in Bonn to find new partners, to find new donors, so that we can bring those needed resources back to the people who really need it. My organization became an accredited entity to both the Adaptation Fund and the Green Climate Fund in the past two years. It's a small entity with just 10 staff, so we're the smallest entity in the world to gain accreditation by both the Green Climate Fund and the Adaptation Fund. When those funds were announced, because they are, the numbers are in the millions, a lot of organizations like ours and a lot of the governments started thinking real big. They want the infrastructure projects. They want the great big million, multi-million dollar projects to come to the country so that they can implement these large projects to help, uh, you know, solve the climate change problem. And that's all good. But the people who are suffering the most are not going to benefit directly from those large projects. And so my own organization is dedicated only to working on small community-based, ecosystem-based adaptation projects that are going to go directly to people like my uncle Antonio to start to solve the problem from the local level while the other accredited entities and the large organizations around the world as well as our governments try to deal with the larger infrastructure and the major climate adaptation uh, and mitigation projects that need to take place. And so that is what I'm focused on. That is what our organization is focused on, is building resilient local communities across Micronesia who are already feeling the daily impacts of climate change. That's what we focus on. Thank you.